Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And I'm really glad you're here today because I have a few different kinds of pockets that I wanted to share with you today. And um, I'm going to use book pages because I am in the process of altering my very first Reader's Digest condensed book and I'm making um, a planner. For myself so I went through and decided exactly what I wanted to have and uh, figured out how many pages I would need to stick together and tear apart um, to accomplish what I want to accomplish in, in this planner and I'm, I'm not done by any means I still have a, a quite a ways to go but I've been making progress on it mainly using uh, napkins to cover the pages and then I'll be putting on um, some coffee dye pages that I uh, printed on um, like a thin typing paper. I actually copied some of my coffee dye papers onto typing paper so that you could still see a little bit of the background underneath the paper. Okay, so whenever you alter a book and you tear out a lot of pages, you end up with a lot of book pages to play with. So I thought I would take these these uh, book pages today and make some pockets out of them. So I, I made five different pockets, so I thought they were five fabulous pockets for, for uh, February. This one is a simple um, envelope style pocket, and then this uh, three heart pocket, and then we have this one that's one, two, three, four pockets. And this one is, there's a pocket here, and when we get it um, glued onto the page, there'll be a pocket back here as well. And then this one will be side pockets. So what I thought I would do is to um, show you how I made each one of these. So I'm gonna set those aside. And the first one, that I'm going to do is this one. So as you probably noticed on my my others, I have a decoupage napkin over them, but not everybody has napkins. Sometimes all you have are stamps. So that's what I did with this one. I just used some stamps and some watercolor pencils. So I have um, this piece. It's not the whole page. So I'm going to uh, fold, I folded it in half and I'll glue it down. And then I'm also taking one, two, three, four, five pages. And I'll show you um, how I put these together. So let me get some parchment paper to put on my desk here. And the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, take two pieces of paper or two pieces, two book pages, and glue them together. And this will be the back one. And the reason I'm gluing them together is to give me a sturdier, uh, a sturdier back pocket, since there will be things going in and out of there. And I, I will sew on this, so I'm using glue stick. I don't really need to be um, gluing the whole thing down, but I'm going to anyway. And you don't have to sew. If you do, if you decide you don't want to sew or you don't have a sewing machine, then uh, definitely make sure you have enough glue on there for to stay together. And I'm just using a glue stick for this. So I'm going to line this up the best I can. Let's try this way. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough. And I will take my brayer and just uh, bray it down. And this is an optional step. You don't really need to do this part. But we're going to be trimming it anyway, so I'm going to trim off the, the border when I'm ready. And then the other uh, pages, I'm going to <clears throat> fold. Uh, let's see where, well, where did it go? Right here. So the first one I'm going to fold all the way, fold it down um, so that so that the top edge meets the side edge. So that's one. And then I'm going to have one behind it. So I want to make sure that when I fold this one down, it 
you can you can still see it so I don't need to fold it all the way over to the edge just just enough to where you can you can still see now what I want to do is to ink ink these edges here so I am going to use distress oxide and I'm using fired brick Okay, so I shall be back in a moment. You notice I'm not doing this one yet. I'm going to wait on that one. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've done all my sewing. And now I'm going to take my ruler, because as you can see, I just sewed basically around the text block. And I'm going to uh, take my ruler and put it just over the stitching. And then I'm just going to tear... Um, these pieces off because I for this particular pocket I don't know I just wanted to, to tear it I just like that edge okay now I, I do want to decorate this a little bit um, so you can still see the text on there but I want to give it a little bit more interest so I have this stamp in fact I found a bunch of these um, rubber stamps at a thrift store or an estate sale a garage sale or something and most of them had never been used I just used this other one for, for the first time on this one when I did this today so now I'm gonna try this one and I'm just gonna line it up at the top like that and then just get the best um, coverage that I can I'm gonna use stays on ink because I'm gonna use watercolor pencils and um, what you know stays on is waterproof okay that's pretty good okay and now um, I'm gonna take some of my watercolor pencils and my water brush which is right here and I'm just gonna fill in some of these flowers and I think I'll use uh, red. Let's just do red and, and green. I mean, we don't have to get super, super fancy. So what I do is I just, uh, just kind of color in loosely with my watercolor pencil. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you, when you add the water to it, if you've never used these before, it will uh, pick up that color and, and move it around. So if you, if you do like my content, it would be wonderful if you could um, hit that like button and the, uh, the notification bell so that you uh, subscribe and get notified of new content when I put it out. And also, one thing that really helps um, is to leave me a comment, and that really tells YouTube to promote my channel. Um, and so that's, that's one way to support all, all of your favorite YouTubers, not just me. I know we all appreciate it. Okay, now I'm going to um, add a little bit more color. I'm going to add um, a darker red on the edges of these petals. This is a really meditative thing to do when you have some time. Um, and when you make these pockets, you don't even have to decorate them right away. I'm just doing it just to kind of show you what can be done. Sometimes it's good just to make a bunch of bases and not do any decorating. Wait until you have a journal to put them in so that you know uh, kind of what your theme is or what the vibe of the journal is. Um, I do that a lot where I just make bases. And um, so I would just leave this undecorated just the book page itself and then decorate it when I have a journal to add it to and then that way I know that I um, I can add whatever vibe if I want it to be steampunk I can do a steampunk vibe or uh, vintage or spring or or whatever so I got these watercolor pencils at Walmart and they are just uh, Royal Langnickel Essentials watercolor pencils. And I'll put a link to them in, my, in the description below 
Okay, now for some green. Look at these leaves. Okay, now this is when the magic happens. I just have water in here. So let's start at the top and work our way down. And then all these colors really come to life. And you can leave it really loose if you want or just, uh, you know, fill in all the all the nooks and crannies, totally up to you. So I'm gonna do all the pinks first, and then I'll go back and do the darker, the darker colors. darken up these the edges of these petals with the water and if you feel like it needs to be darker you just once there's water on there you can just add a little bit more color with your with your pencil and then that deepens it even further Okay, before I do the green, I'm just going to uh, clean the tip a little bit just by pushing some water through it. And you can add as many colors as you want if you're not limited. Um, I will probably go over this eventually and fill in all the little black uh, petal things or stamens, I mean, um, in, inside the flowers and maybe add a little bit more color. But for now, I think I'm going to call it done. Okay, I'm going to set that uh, aside to dry for a minute. And now we need to work on this part. This is the bottom pocket. And so I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to uh, glue it down and then I'll stamp on it. Well, I can stamp on it and then sew it or sew it and then stamp on it. It doesn't really matter. But I wanted to do this uh, this butterfly. I think I will go ahead and do it in the stays on and then I will probably color it at a future time because I want to get onto some of these other um, these other projects. Okay, so I'm going to sew um, around the pocket here, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have sewn around this pocket, and I went ahead and colored in the butterfly too, and the, the little circles that were on the main part here with the flowers, and then I just added some blue circles down here too, just to kind of tie it together. So now I'm going to... Um, add this part of the pocket on the bottom so that's nice and colorful isn't it I also added a little thumb hole here and now I can finish inking around the whole rest of the pocket and then this will be ready for my stash this looks like a nice uh, spring Kind of a springy pocket okay so that is 
pocket number one. So I'll set these two aside and uh, get on with the next one. So the next one I want to do is this pocket here. And as you can see, I've used napkin and I have uh, three book pages that I have folded in half. And now I'm going to um, just glue them down. Looks like I'm running out of glue. <laughs> And I like to double them over just to give them some strength and also so it doesn't have a raw edge where you're, you're uh, inserting your embellishments and ephemera into the pocket itself. Okay. So whichever one you want on top should have, have the, uh, the napkin with like the most pattern. And for that, I'm picking this one. This is basically going to be very similar to the one that I've already completed. Excuse me. So I'm going to use some uh, Distress Collage Medium for this process. You can use Mod Podge if you like. It works just as well. I just happen to have this right here. And I really like using this with napkins. I, um, although, you know, Mod Podge works just fine too. So this has this line on the bottom, and I'm going to line up the, the bottom of the book page with, with that line so that I don't get it in my final project. And then I'll just uh, trim it at the top. So this is where I also like to use my brayer. And then um, on the edges, I'll just add some more of the Distress Collage Medium where it wants to lift up. I've already removed um, the backing of the napkin. Just, you know, I mean, you don't need to watch me do that. <laughs> That's boring. And I can even take the, you know, the excess here and glue it down, which I will go ahead and do. And I'm just gonna use my glue stick for that. And then add another coat on the top and that will seal it and hopefully there's no giant air pockets that happens sometimes <laughs> okay one down now the next one I'm just using this edge of the napkin um, and I'm gonna put it on the front edge here because I, I don't need it to go all the way to the bottom or to the to the inside of it. That's not necessary. I think I'm going to do it this way and wrap the uh, the little that little blue edge over. Most of these napkins I get at the Dollar Tree, but I do occasionally find them at uh, thrift stores. I did pick up some yesterday at Party City and they were really, really pretty, but a little, you know, more expensive. And then for the last section, I have this little strip. You can use all the same napkin too. You don't have to uh, vary your your napkin choices for this. Um, I just like to do it just because I think it gives a little bit more variety. But if you've got napkin pieces that you know have really different sections, um, you know different images on the sections, then you know just use the same one. But I just happen to have quite a few um, strips and stuff from doing previous collages. Okay, let's wrap up my brush and uh, in a baby wipe to keep it moist. And now I'm going to um, dry these off with my heat tool and I'll be right back. Okay, so these are all dry now and I have gone and trimmed off the, uh, this, the top section a little bit. And now I'm going to line them all up on my craft mat to find the center um, and then cut the thumb hole or punch it out. So I just used my craft mat to help me determine where the center is. And I'm just making a little mark. Okay. 
all on the back side. So when I sew these together, what I will do is uh, I'm just going to sew down the sides and then across just the bottom, you know, this this edge here. Um, and, and that way, uh, by not gluing this part down, it will leave the, um, each, each pocket will go all the way to this edge. Okay. So each one will have like these, the one here will be the deepest one and then the second deepest one. So I'll, I'll just sew along here and then along the bottom and along this edge and to make sure that they stay where they're supposed to, I'm just gonna use these clips. And you can use uh, paper clips or whatever, whatever you want, but this way I won't be um, sewing over my, over glue if I can help it. I would prefer not to do that if I don't have to. This is great. So I will be right back. Okay, this one is all done now, and so we have a pocket here, and a pocket here, and a pocket here, and it will fit on the page just fine. And you can add later on, if you want to add a butterfly or some words or something like that, you can certainly do that. You can even, um, for example, you can even round the corners. And that makes it look nice and finished. I won't round that one because the stitching is all the way to the edge. There. Okay, I'm calling this one done. And well, let's move on to the next pocket. Okay, so it's actually the next day now. Uh, when I finished the last pocket that we made, I all of a sudden got very tired because it was late at night when I started it and I just needed to go put on my jammies and go to bed. So it's like I said, it's the next day and we're going to go ahead and, and make this one now. This one is probably the simplest of all of them. So I'm going to set that aside so you can see how it's done. I have um, a piece of napkin here that I'm going to use to create it. And I have um, one of the book pages and the first thing you need to do is to make a square. And so the easiest way to do that is just, you probably learned this in kindergarten, <laughs> is just fold it um, like so. And then it also helps to get it straight on the, uh, on the text line, if you can do that. So it's straight against this text line here. And I'm just gonna take my ruler and uh, put it on the edge of that line and then just tear off the piece. And that could be used for something else. Okay, so you fold these uh, corners towards the center where that fold line is and crease those down. And then this, this side just gets folded up. And you, you need to fold it up a little bit, um, not, not right here, but a little bit further up. That way it will overlap these pieces enough so that you can glue them down. So I just want to get that fold really straight on both ends here. And then I'm just going to fold this part down. You can cut this part off too, but I'm going to fold it down just to give it a little bit of strength. Okay, and then before I glue everything down, I'm going to ink it up. So, and then I'm just going to use um, just vintage photo.
And since I'm using the oxide, Distress Oxide, um, it's, it's also nice just to spray a little bit of water on it. And then that kind of enhances the oxidation effect. Okay, so I'm just going to um, dry this with my heat tool, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so that's dry, and I'm going to glue the uh, glue the sides of the envelope down. First, this little piece right here, and since I inked it before I glued it, now I can see exactly where the glue lines need to go. So if you want this to be an envelope that closes, you might want to ink this part too. But I think what I'm going to do is when I put it on a page, I'm going to have it be open. So I'm not going to ink that part unless I, I can change my mind later, but for now I'm just going to leave it like this. So I can take my napkin and I'm going to use my water brush to um, just kind of uh, wipe around or you know paint with my water brush around the uh, image that I want which is this little butterfly and then that makes it really easy to pull it apart that way you don't have any hard edges so I'm going to use that piece and then like I did on the other one I'm going to use a little bit of um, the edge here I don't think I have enough to be able to pull in that dragonfly. Enough room, so I'm going to just cut it there and then here. And my collage medium. And again, Mod Podge works just as well. So I just got done watching Tim Holtz, uh, his, his live presentation that he does sometimes on Saturday mornings. And um, he's releasing new fabrics. And I'm super excited about that because I am one of those people that just loves to sew. And I can see all kinds of uses <laughs> for his line of fabrics in making junk journals and just all kinds of stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I might need to call up the, the quilting store in um, one of the neighboring towns here in Mount Vernon um, and see if they carry it. Because apparently one of the commenters on the, um, on the live happened to mention the store, Calico Creations in Mount Vernon, that they have it on their website. And I used to work at a store right next to that one in Mount Vernon. I used to work right next to Calico Creations. And back then I was um, designing and making little girls' dresses to sell. And um, they have an amazing, just an amazing selection of wonderful fabrics that I I used to use and I did a lot in, in polished cotton and just just love the way they turned out. So here we go, all done. So you know I could make I could make these all day. Because you could have so many different different designs on them, you could stamp on them or whatever. But these are super simple to make, and they look great in a journal. Okay, so for the next one, I want to show how I how I made this little beauty, and this is another one that's super super simple. Um, so I'm just going to grab the the pieces that I have prepared, and. Since I'm working on an owl journal, my little focal point is going to be an owl. And I have uh, some of the napkin here. It, this is uh, one that I ordered online. And I took uh, two, two pages and I've already glued them together. So this is super easy. 
you just fold it up a little bit like like this and then you fold it down like that okay <laughs> is that easy enough now before I um, sew this down like I did on this one I'm gonna put the the napkin on and since it is going to be covered by a napkin you don't have to worry about cutting off the the border or the margins around and um, it'll fit since this is a fairly small book, like I said, these are Reader's Digest condensed books, it'll fit on a page just fine. And you can make it smaller if you want, um, no big deal. But as you can see from this one, I didn't. So it'll, it'll look great on a page. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut off a piece of this, um, this napkin. And again, I'm gonna use my water brush. You can use a paintbrush, it doesn't have to be a water brush. I just happen to have this here and um, I don't have to worry about spilling water on my desk. Okay, and then that'll go here and the other one will go on top there. So but these pockets, you know, I, I doubt anything here that I'm doing is new. But the nice thing is, is that they're they're easy, they're fun. Uh, you can do several in a in a pretty big hurry, and have some wonderful um, ephemera and you know things ready to go in journals. not going to go all the way to the fold with this because I kind of like the uh, the uneven edge of the napkin alrighty so I have um, dried everything and cut off the excess and now I'm just going to take my uh, my ink pad I'm using rusty hint oh, that's wild honey <laughs> here we go I use old spools for ink daubers uh, then I, I have one handy for every color I'm just going to go around um, the top here where where the napkin didn't go and then I can ink the rest of it a little bit later when it's all sewn together. And again, you do not need to sew. You can just glue, and if you like the look of sewing, you can just take a black pen or whatever color pen you want, and then just make stitching marks and do faux stitching on there. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna sew is I'm gonna open it up this way. I'm gonna sew across the top here, and then I'm gonna fold it, and then sew down the sides and around the bottom and the top. Okay, so I'll be right back as soon as that's done. Okay, well that was a bit of an ordeal. My sewing machine decided to have a little hissy fit right here. Got all jammed up, but I fixed it. Okay, so now I have uh, some music sheet or music paper here, and I'm gonna use the same uh, Distress ink, or oxide rather, and the rusty hinge to just go around this little scrap of music paper. And I'm just gonna glue it on with um, some of the Distress, or not Distress, the Scotch Create glue stick. And by the way, I should let you know that my husband found a source where he can buy four, a set of four on Amazon for $10. So that's a bit of a savings. And um, I'll put a description to that, or a link to that in the description box below the video. So that if you'd like to do that, he always orders it for me because he's the one with the Prime account, which means we don't have to pay shipping. So even even more savings. And then I have these two super cute little owls that I'm going to set on here. And again, I got these out of one of my my bird books. It's a Reader's Digest one that I found at a thrift store. And then, like I did on this one, 
You can add some words. Um, I used always and loyal. And I just printed these, you know, I just typed them up in my computer. You can use any font that your computer um, um, supports. And then, uh, so I just did a whole sheet's worth of them and then I cut them out and use them as needed. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do with this is to round the corners. And I'm just using my corner chomper and um, again, totally optional, but I just like the way it looks. And I'm just going um, using the quarter inch radius. Okay, so I'm calling this one done. Another super, super fast, super easy pocket um, that'll look great in your journal. Okay, now for the next one and the last one, I'm gonna do this um, heart-shaped pocket. And what I did is I um, folded the, let me get the exact one that I, that I used. So I just folded it um, in, in half lengthwise, and then I just, you know, really just hand cut the heart out. I just, you know, didn't draw it on there or anything. But because I want my hearts to be the same size, I then took a piece of cardstock and put this on top of the cardstock and then traced out a template. And then that way, all of my hearts will be the, the same size. So again, I'm just using um, book page and music page and napkin. And then the other little embellishment that I have on here are some of these uh, die cuts, these little, they're not really wood. They're just, they're paper. They, they feel like wood and they look like wood, but they're not, they're paper. You can see that they're kind of thick, right? So that they would add a little bit of bulk to your um, to your journal. And so what I did is I um, soaked it in a little bit of water for literally just about two minutes. And then you can peel the layers apart. And then you just get this nice little flat, paper thin uh, die cut that is really pretty on journals. And the nice thing is that you pay a dollar and you get um, six of these different pieces in here, but when you pull them apart, you get four. So you end up with 24 beautiful little embellishments. And again, they, they have a whole bunch of different kinds of these. And uh, so you get, you know, 24 for the price of six and a dollar. So what I did is I uh, took some metallic gold paint and then just painted it and then um, glued it on here. So I just love the way that turned out. So let's go ahead and make this one. Let's set this aside until I'm ready for it. And I have um, this piece of music sheet that I glued onto a, uh, did I use three? I might have used, yeah, I used three layers to give it a little bit of stiffness so that when you, um, when you're putting things in and out, uh, you know, tags and stuff like that, it's nice and sturdy. So I just uh, glued three book pages together, and on this one I used two and then topped it with um, some music sheet. So now I'm just going to uh, fold these in half and take my heart shape. Oh, let's go this way. <laughs> if I did it the other way, that would be stupid. Okay. And I'm just going to draw around this little piece of cardstock. And I will keep this little template because it's just, to me, it just worked out really, really great. And then same with this one. I'm just going to fold it in half. And I can get two hearts out of one of these book pages. And then you just, you, seriously, you just cut them out. And you don't have to use book pages. You can use scrapbook paper or whatever you want. I'm using book pages because I have a ton of them now. <laughs> I need to use them up. Now I have three nice hearts. I want to fold out that or press out that crease as much as possible, but it won't really matter. 
we're going to be sewing on them anyway. And now um, I just want to cover them with the napkin. This is one of the napkins I got at uh, Party City. I thought it was really pretty. So actually before I uh, sew these, I'm gonna uh, ink around them with this chipped sapphire uh, distress oxide because I really, really like that, that color with these uh, shades of blue. I also wanted to show you this little uh, tip. So if you've never sewn before or if you're new to sewing, this is called the presser foot. I'm gonna stand up so I can hold it up there. And you can see that there are these little grooves like right here, right here, and right here. And those are to help you determine where to, um, where to place the edge, where to place it on your fabric. So if, if I want my stitching line to be here, then I just need to make sure that the edge of my fabric is always going uh, through, you know, underneath the presser foot on this line. So as I'm sewing, I'm making sure that the edge always goes next to that groove or even with that groove. Okay? And then when you get to the bottom, you just leave the needle in and lift up the, the presser foot and then you, you turn it so that it's still going on, you know, along that line. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm done with the sewing, and all I'm doing now is just kind of fitting it on the on the page so that I can see kind of how to arrange them before I glue them all down. So I'm going to uh, glue this one first, and I'm just going to glue like right around in in this area. Okay, and I'm going to leave the others in there. Oh, let's take the pin out. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to turn it over and then just you can just draw on the back. Okay, so now what I have when I'm ready to put this in a journal, I have a pocket here and a pocket here and a pocket here. And so when I when I glue it onto the page, I can just glue the, just the outlines on, and then it'll form my pocket. Okay, so the last thing I want to put on here is my little heart. I'm going to put it up here in the, just kind of right there. And for this, I'm going to use uh, the Distress Collage Medium again, because I, there's no way I want to take my <laughs> glue and just, you know, kind of go around all those little shapes there. Um, but it works really well with the Distress Collage Medium because this stuff dries clear and it shrinks. Okay, so um, it'll go, it'll shrink back in on itself, I guess is what I'm saying. And just blot some of the excess glue off and then that'll work right very well okay so that was the last pocket so we ended up with all these different pockets just made out of book page uh, book pages from a reader's digest condensed book and where's the oh here we go and a whole lot of fun 
So super simple, really easy, and something that you can do um, pretty quickly and have have some fun with. And like I said, you don't need a sewing machine. You can you don't even need to draw on any faux stitching if you don't want to. You can just you know, play with it and see what you come up with and, and what you like. So I hope you did like this. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel and always hit the notification bell so that you know when I have uploaded new content. And leave me a comment because that's one of those things that uh, YouTube really pays attention to in their algorithms. And I don't understand algorithms. I just know that comments help. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today, everybody, and yesterday, because this is a sort of a two-day video for me. And um, I hope to see you in my next video. So happy crafting, everybody, and always let the serendipity find you. Take care. Bye-bye.